vanilla marlin, TH3D, tiny machines, and what about bootloaders? In this video, we're going to explain Marlin 3D printer firmware. A lot of people that enjoy 3D printing are hesitant to play with their firmware because Marlin can be a daunting beast, especially if you're a beginner. I know it was certainly like that for me when I started out. In this video, I'm going to attempt to explain Marlin in an easily digestible form. This will let you understand the firmware a lot better, how it works, and help you make a decision on which version of Marlin that you should use. Let's start with some basics. What exactly does firmware mean? We have our 3D printer, which is the hardware. We have the code from Marlin, which is the software, but since that software resides on the hardware, it makes it firmware. Firmware can be found on a lot of other electronic objects elsewhere in your life. Think about the menus on your TVs, your Blu-ray players, and everything like that. The firmware used in 99% of 3D printers sold these days is called Marlin, and it was based on a previous firmware called Sprinter. Over the years, there's been a lot of different versions of Marlin. When I was playing with the firmware on my Solar Doodle, it was Marlin 1.0. The most recent stable release is 1.1.9, and Marlin 2.0 is in development, optimized for 32-bit ARM microprocessors. So if Marlin is on the majority of 3D printers, why do you hear people talking about vanilla Marlin, TH3D, tiny machines, or anything else? Well, let's get it straight. They are all actually Marlin. They're just variations on the same thing. Vanilla Marlin is the main branch or the original branch that all of the others are based on. This is the one that when you go to the Marlin firmware site that you can download yourself. When you or someone else downloads it, it's called making a fork. You take a copy of the Marlin source files and you configure them to suit your particular application. Even if you update this configuration a year later, however, it's still based on the version that you forked back in that part of time, which means any new features from Vanilla Marlin won't be included in your build. Now the firmware found on recent Creality printers is forked from Marlin 1.1.6, so it's missing some of the newer features. This can be seen on the CR10S Pro as well as the Ender 3. The TH3D unified firmware is constantly being updated from the newest Marlin, and the Tiny Machines version I showed you how to install on the CR10S Pro in my last video is based on a new version of Marlin as well. Every time I make a guide on using vanilla Marlin, I fork it from whatever the latest version is at the time. This is why myself and a lot of other people recommend updating your firmware because it means you'll be getting the newest features that companies like Creality just don't include in their firmware. Let's talk about bootloaders. Bootloaders are not a part of Marlin. The microcontrollers on our main boards have flash program space for storing our firmware. A bootloader occupies part of this space and allows the rest of the firmware to be updated without a special programmer. Think of a bootloader like a doorman. When you plug in your printer to your computer, it answers the door and allows the new firmware to come in. Without a bootloader, nobody answers the door and you won't be able to update easily. I once saw a thread where a person claimed to have been sold a bootloader off Amazon, and that's definitely not the way it works. A bootloader is just a bit of code that can be burned for free within Arduino, as long as you have the right hardware, and the right hardware can include an old Arduino Uno board. So why would a manufacturer not include a bootloader on their main board? Well, there's two reasons. The first is it does take up a little bit of space. So if they're trying to pack a lot into their build, they might not be able to fit it on the microcontroller without emitting it. Secondly, and the more realistic reason, is it's an extra step and therefore they have to pay someone to do it and it's gonna to add to the expense and cut their profit margins. So we've covered the bootloader, but how about the actual Marlin files? If we download the source, we'll see that Marlin is made up of a bunch of different files. Some of them end with .h, some of them end with .cpp, and one of them will end with .ino. All these different files have different purposes, and we can group them as such. The majority of them control the various functions of the printer. Think of things like moving the stepper motors, reading from the SD card, heating the bed and nozzle, as well as calculating acceleration and jerk. We have another set of files that are used to establish the language on LCDs, and there's one of those for each of the languages offered by Marlin. We have a series of files to do with the pins for the hardware, and that simply tells Marlin what's connected to what on our main board. Finally, we have two main configuration files, configuration.h and configuration underscore adv.h. Generally, when you're setting up the firmware, these are the only two files that you'll need to play with, and that's where you put in all of the variables related to your printer. This includes simple things like setting up the size of the bed, 
as well as what thermistor you're using, what LCD, and any other hardware such as auto bed leveling. There's so many files because the Marlin source tries to cater for as many different 3D printer hardware configurations as possible, so it's exhaustive and includes more than the typical build will ever need. When we upload to the main board, everything that we leave out of our configuration will be left out, and Marlin knows what to leave out in two separate ways. The first are comments. Anything with a double forward slash at the start is treated as a comment and for human reading only. When Marlin compiles the firmware, Anything that is a comment is completely ignored. Comments are used in two ways in Marlin. Quite often there's human readable instructions that help you set up your configuration, but they're also used to enable and disable certain printer functionality. That brings us to our second method, and it's one of the fundamentals of programming, and that's the if-else statement. A simple version of this to understand is, if it's raining outside, I'll take an umbrella today. In programming, we call this a conditional statement. In Marlin, this type of logic is achieved with define statements. There'll be a single line in the configuration, such as define SD support, and then elsewhere in the code, we'll find sections that say if defined SD support, and then code that goes within that. If we have define SD port uncommented and therefore enabled, all of the files associated with this will be included in the compiled firmware and the size will increase. Conversely, if we comment out define SD card support, any files and references that relate to SD card printing will be left out and the size of the compiled firmware will get smaller. This same system works exactly the same way for things like EEPROM, auto bed leveling, M600 filament change, filament runout detection, and various LCD options. Microcontrollers in the main boards of our 3D printers have a finite amount of flash space. So on something like an Ender 3 that has a smaller microcontroller than other printers, as we enable some new features like auto bed leveling, we may need to disable others to save space and get it to fit on the main board. A typical one that we'll leave out is something like arc support. Now there's nothing to stop you from adding to the Marlin code and putting in your own conditional statements to help you with your configuration. And this is exactly what TH3D does. Tim has set up in configuration.h his own custom define sections. Take for instance, if we uncomment define ender three. Elsewhere in the firmware, Tim has set up if define Ender 3 sections, and that has all the correct variables for the Ender 3. Typically, you would set up for only one printer at a time in Marlin, but Tim has set up his version in a way that caters for many printers by simply uncommenting one line. He's also set it up so we can have the same one line uncommenting to enable support for Easy ABL and other TH3D products. Now the downside is because of these structural changes to Marlin, the way Tim set it up, if you're doing something more advanced or customized or unusual, you might find it harder to find the appropriate bits of code to configure your printer. But for the vast majority of people, TH3D version of Marlin is gonna be absolutely perfect for their needs. Personally, I'm confident enough with Marlin that I prefer to stick with vanilla version and be able to set it up exactly the way I want. Now it wouldn't be a fair representation of Tim's work if I summarized it as only changes to the configuration to suit his products. Configuration features such as slim LCDs were set up by Tim to help with printers like the Ender 3 and have since been incorporated back into the main Marlin branch. That's just one example and there's probably many more changes that he's contributed on top of that. Now sometimes when you download Marlin firmware, you don't get all the source files, instead you get a single hex file. And that's because every time we hit upload or verify, the Arduino IDE compiles all of the Marlin source into a single hex file, which is machine code for uploading to the main board. After you've uploaded, if you know where to look on your computer, you'll be able to find this same hex file. Now a question I see all the time is, can we take this hex file, either one that we've downloaded or maybe read off the printer and get it back to the source and look at all the configuration? And unfortunately, the answer is no. The analogy that most applies here is a recipe. After we've mixed up, blended, and cooked all of the ingredients, we'll have a final product, and it's impossible to break them back apart to take them back to raw ingredients to understand exactly what went into the dish. When using the printer, you'll be able to get a fair idea, but you'll never know the exact configuration. That's gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully it was very useful because it has been requested by a fair few people. Some take home points. Firstly, all of these different versions of the firmware are all based on Marlin. A bootloader is not something you can buy from the store. It's something that just gets flushed to the computer with an appropriate programmer. And Marlin, as a piece of software, tries to cater for as many printers as possible. But when you configure it, you choose what is included and left out before it's flushed to your printer.
Although it might seem daunting at first, generally you only have to play with two different files when you're configuring Marlin. So I encourage you to branch out and slowly build up some confidence in doing just this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.